one time I was talking to Rogan about, we were like, we were working out together in a hotel. So he was like, you know, when I work out, I think about that someone's trying to kill me. And that's how I, that's what I push up against. And I was like, what? And he goes, yeah, I, I just, I imagine that someone's trying to kill me. And that's as I push through the, you know, I was Do you like, realize okay. I, how little we have in common? 100%. <laughs> Ah, <sighs> what a Four week! What minutes. what a week! <laughs> <laughs> Haven't seen you in a minute. How you doing, buddy? Oh, it's so good to be here. I feel like I've lost weight, but it doesn't show. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How are those workouts going? Uh, horrible, horrible. You look. You were walking really. You were limping. In the I'm not way. walking very well at all. Soreness. So I'm doing two days. I'm doing two a days. I'm doing five and a half miles every day. By the way, two thousand miles is unattainable. It really is unattainable. I need. Is there a bet you have going or something? It's or no? with me. Okay. It's just with myself. I th you know I tried to tell that to my daughters. I was like, Are you going to call an audible on your total you're going for? No, now? I'm going I'm to fucking. I'm going to push forward. Michelle Wolf already told me you need to cut yours to fifteen hundred. You're not going to do two thousand. She's like already said like there's no way you're getting to two thousand. Does that make you want to do it? Or oh, do you accept hardcore. It? I'm not going to have a woman tell me physically especially a redheaded woman are you out of your fucking mind michelle this is a, no this is a good... <laughs> no it's a good angle she do, can i tell you I, I had to i it's weird when you find out other comics are like good at other things or it's weird when you <laughs> like when I, I i learned that too they're like you know michelle wolf runs and i was like oh yeah a lot of people are like no 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 she really uh, runs yeah like Oh, no one wants a fat chick in the. You're like, <laughs> I get it. No, I sure. Nikki, everyone yeah, runs. Yeah. Hey, Amy Schumer but runs. Michelle Wolf's on like uh, marathon. Michelle Wolf's right? fucking. Was she, she cross country did, runner? She did rim to rim. Type in rim to rim. Sounds a lot dirtier than it is. She did rim to rim. No, no one was thinking. She did that. rim to rim. Hold on. Let's just call Michelle Wolf and have her us tell oh, okay. her what, what rim to rim is. So Michelle Wolf and I, I texted her when I ran a thousand miles. I said, "How many miles did you run this year?" She goes, "That's an interesting question." Writes back, 1,500, dot, dot, dot. And then the next day, just ups it by another 10 miles. And I'm like, whoa. She's like, hey, 1,000 miles, legit accomplishment. And I was like, yeah, it was. And that, but I looked at my numbers through the year, and I was like, there were months where I had like seven miles. Like months where yeah, I didn't was really partying balls. Yeah. I was like, I bet if I really focused, I could get to 2,000 miles. And then she just writes back, what's the challenge this year? And I was like, bitch, you know my fucking voice. You know how I think so What's your well. hashtag? Wolf to... Wolf machine. Wolf machine. Everyone stopped. It got flagged because these fucking assholes started just putting Bert fucks wolves all over it. <laughs> so if I could catch a wolf, I'd fuck it. Um, I, okay, Michelle Wolf. Let's fucking... Someone doesn't have an iPhone. Okay, do we FaceTime her? Go for it, FaceTime's man. FaceTime's like a legit f handout. Like that's... when you FaceTime someone, that's like, yo, I'm here. Yeah, that's like kicking someone's window open, man. <laughs> like FaceTime, FaceTime is... Then they know, hey, we're we're being serious about this. Oh, yeah. This is a real friendship now. Yeah. I wonder if she's, she's going to answer it because I'm too close. It's a pretty aggressive move. Especially someone who... Like, I probably met Michelle once. I text with her. So it's a, a FaceTime's like a it's a lot. Especially there's it's a lot, a lot of things you could be doing that you're like, hey, whoa. hey, man, I, yeah, you should text me first before you do this. Unavailable. <laughs> She's probably like, I don't want to fucking FaceTime this guy. <laughs> Can he just text like everybody else? She just texted. Are you doing all right? <laughs> On a podcast with Tom, talking about our mileage. FaceTime me if you can. She's probably with Dave Chappelle in his compound. Yeah. She's in, she's in Austin. She's in Austin? Oh, I'm sure she is. She's got the fuck. Dude, you want to talk about, like, you want to talk about best quarantines ever? Yeah. Michelle Wolf spent the entire quarantine in Yellow Springs with Dave Chappelle. She's doing shows Getting all the time. tested nonstop, running outdoors. And and doing shows. Spots. And doing shows non-fucking stop. Yeah. Uh, that's pretty cool. She'll, be, she'll have one of the best specials. You know that already, As if I'm a Netflix exec, I'm like, well, let's buy that special right now. Yeah. Let's but buy her, Mo Ammer, uh, Donnell. They're the only ones doing stand-up. And so, uh, all right, so Michelle, I got Michelle. I texted her, said doing a FaceTime with Tom, talking about her mileage. Now, so I'm doing two days. In order Do to get you to, run your five? I ran, f uh, ran five this morning. I didn't run five. I didn't run my five and a half. So what I do is the way my brain works is if I don't run the five and a half, I'm forced to go on the treadmill at the end of the day, very, very end of the day. 
Yeah. And then if I get on the treadmill at the end of the day, I'll put in two and a half. I'll just get, I, I'll just do two and a half. Yeah. So then I'll get above my mileage. So I always fall short, four miles, three miles, and then whatever. Now I'm doing two days. So I started working with a trainer. A legit trainer. And the how'd first, you get the trainer? How'd you find, how'd you pick a trainer? Movies. What do you mean? Uh, movie production. The production picture? Movie production. Let's just leave it bland. Movie production. Like she's, she's a movie. She is the person a production hires to get someone to lose weight. Okay. I can't tell you all the business. She's right, done. right. Okay. But, but so, so she's referred to you. Yes. Okay. And she's friends with Tate Fletcher. Really good friends with Tate Fletcher. She's one of the, uh, by the way, is I, she the one that came over? What? Is she the one that was with Tate when they came, when I was Yeah. There? Wait, were you there? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you met her. Yeah. yeah. You met her. You met she her. She was in the passenger seat. Yep. 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 Yeah. So first day, I mean, like, I'm sitting there going, like, I run five and a half miles a day. I'm in pretty good shape. I am hung over the first time. She had me just do this, like, just go, like, raise my arms 13 mm -hmm. times. Yeah. And all of a sudden, oh, like, I do that in like, uh, physical therapy. Fucking my back's on fire. And I'm like, yeah. she's like, now out to the side. I'm like, Gah! and then she has me do shit where I just go, that's just stupid. No one does. Like, why would I do that? Like, just like doing a, standing in like a plank and then grabbing a weight and pulling it to one side, then switching it mm -hmm. and doing that like fucking 70 times. I, I did I did lunges for five minutes straight. And that's I, why you're walking funny. Yeah. And yeah. I'm just like, my body is fucked. Yeah. Fucked. So then I do, the, I do runs in the morning, trainer in the afternoon, then runs at night. How many days a week? I do trainer four days a week. Wow. And I run every day. That's I have to run I have to run five and a half miles every day, every day of the week to make fucking but when you if, if you go do your thing or whatever, like you're not gonna be able to keep that pace up. I don't know. I don't know. So do here's you travel my, or something? Here's my goal. Here's my goal. What? My goal is I can if I can drop a little bit of weight, like just a little bit. How much is a little bit? I'm fucking right now ten pounds would be astronomical. Mm-hmm. And then I can, and then my body will feel better running, and running will be a lot easier. Like I noticed yeah. that running from the even just the beginning of the year, when I finished a thousand miles to where I am today, I can run so much better. Speaking of which, you are moving better. Yeah, yeah. Like you're moving. Like I know. how fucking crazy is that? How how long is this ago? Was this injury now? December first. December first. So we're looking at nine weeks, nine ten weeks. Nine weeks. Yeah. You thought? Did you ever think it was ne you're never going to get to the place where you can like walk where you are? No, it's it's very like there, there's a lot of different thoughts. Like at first, you know, even after surgery, they go they point to the arm and they're like, "Fine, it's going to be fine." Uh, the nerves in your arm and your hand will come back. It'll, it'll take a long time. And I'm like, okay. And then they go, "The real thing's going to be that knee." And I'm like, "What?" Like I wasn't even thinking. I'm like, "What do you mean?" Like you you fixed it. And they're like. You're going to have to learn to walk again. You have muscle atrophy in your quad. Yeah, but the muscle atrophy is almost gone, right? No. No, no really? the, it stopped atrophying because I'm using it again. Yeah, yeah, okay. But to build it back Could up. Could you see it when you... You can see it right now. For real? I'll show you after. Really? You can see that the right leg is full. Dude. And like you can see like the both quad. your thighs and get a big dick. <laughs> it's, it's freaky to look at. I bet paraplegic dudes have the biggest hogs. I don't know about that. Type in paraplegic dick. It's got to be a porn. There's got to be a porn. Paraplegic. I don't know about that. I can call a paraplegic. Para's just two, right? Yeah. Let's I can see. call paraplegic. Okay. What's that second one there? That's, oh, that's a, a paraplegic girl who got waxed. Okay, that's a 17-second clip. Um, that, yeah. Wait, go to paraplegic girl. That's why. That can't be something I want to see. I That's not the girl's not paraplegic. I don't, She's just not moving. Oh, that. Wait, is that really? A, I mean, she's not fighting back. She doesn't feel anything. No, you feel is your it, vagina, right? No, not if you're a real, true paraplegic. Wait, can you not feel your dick if you're paraplegic? I, don't, I mean, if you're a true paraplegic, right? Like, you don't have feeling below your waist. I don't see what you Do we feel. call an expert? Who do we know? That's I know a guy. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, and we ask him if he feels his dick? Yeah, is that bad? I don't know. How, how well do you know the guy? Pretty good. Okay. Give him a call. 
Ask him how his dick's doing. Is this a bad phone call to make to someone? Just say, well, just phrase it. Hey, don't be like, hey, man, we're doing this thing. How do you feel? Just be like, hey, we have questions about um, sex with, you know, can we ask you? Oh, uh, but that's maybe that's, should I not say his name then? Or like, well, I, like how does How do you know the guy? I know him. Okay. I partied with him. I got him so drunk he fell out of his wheelchair one time. Okay. I thought you were like, and I got him paralyzed. No, no, Because then no, I say, no, definitely no. don't call him. No, and he, um, like, he comes to all my shows. I know him. I think you can call him. Yeah? Yeah. Get ready to take it out. Zupan, what's up? How are you? Good. Hey, you're on a podcast with me and Tom. Sweet. Hey, um, we were talking. We have some uh, paraplegic questions. We had some talk questions we wanted to ask you. Is it cool if okay. we ask? If we, is it cool if we ask them? Ask whatever you want. Oh, that's what I love. Okay. So Tom has has atrophy in his left leg. Yep. And, and he's been noticing that his dick looks bigger. Is that like a count? Does your dick look bigger when you when you're when you're paraplegic? Why? Because your leg's smaller, so it makes your dick just that much bigger? Yeah. I think. Yeah, you know, mine's small anyway, so I don't <laughs> fuck. I mean, Jesus Christ. So it's same, <laughs> same, bro. Being small. <laughs> same, my same. Being small don't change anything. Tom said same, <laughs> same. <laughs> I know. It's fucking funny, isn't it? <laughs> hey, wait. So, so then, um, so then, do you, can, does your dick get hard? Can you have sex? Yeah, my wife's pregnant as we speak. Hey, congratulations. Oh, fuck yeah. Yeah. Oh, Wait, congratulations. What's his name? Mark Zupan. Thank you. Mark, let me ask you know, you, know, you know Mark? Did you ever see the documentary Murderball? Yeah. That's him. Oh. Here, hang on. Tom wants to talk to you. Hey. How you doing, bud? I'm good. Yourself? Doing well. Thank you. I have a question, though, because we were, we were talking. This is all prompted by Bert's uh, perversions. but um, So of course. I saw a clip of a woman who was uh, paralyzed and... Yeah. She in this interview, it was it was like a very, uh, I think it's on TikTok, and she she has okay. a whole she has a whole feed about it. She was in an accident, you know, a few years ago, and in this in this video, she said, you know, I get asked this. She goes, no, I don't feel um, penetration or intercourse because I have no right. feeling, and so it led to the question about, well, you know, maybe that's the the level of paralysis she has, as opposed to, you know, what I mean, like that. Some people can feel and some can't. Does that make sense or no? Yeah, of course. Yeah. Okay. You know, like my, so I broke my neck and I can feel everything. So it's good and bad. You know, I have, my legs fucking suck because they don't really work so well, but mm -hmm. they, you feel everything. So gotcha. Feel oh, okay. But yeah. No, depending upon where, where the person breaks their neck and how bad they do mm -hmm. or back, if mm -hmm. it's severed, if it's severed, then you're usually going to get, um, not you're not gonna have the feeling or the the mobility from it. right right so, so if you um so they're like there's paralyzed males who don't feel below the weight like don't feel anything sexual like sexual organs yes, right okay of course so it's yeah. just it's basically you do feel these things because of the type of injury allows you to still feel it yeah that's exactly it okay Fuck yeah. it's, it's, it's on how much damage you do to your spinal cord essentially got you Okay. Thanks for answering that, man. Dude. Anytime. Hey, uh, fuck yeah. Thank you very much. I, I fucking love you. All right. Uh, we'll, we'll, I'll give you a call later, okay? Yeah, we'll be thinking okay. about your dick with more questions yeah, later. We'll, yeah, if we have any more questions, we'll call you. <laughs> oh, please do. <laughs> All right, brother. I'll talk to you later. Bye. That's a great fucking doc. Murder ball? Murder balls. Fucking pull up Zupan. Um, which reminds me, I just saw two things that are phenomenal. Z yep. There he is. Go scroll down. Hey, by the way. Yeah, Mark Zupan is... Uh, having that queued up with no to die. I mean, that's proof right there why we got rid of him. That's fucking amazing. Good job. God damn, yeah. We didn't have to ask you. Zupan lives... Uh, I see him every time I'm in Texas. I'm not going to tell you where he lives, but I see him every time in Texas. And I had written a joke about him. Oh, Houston. No, oh, sorry, no I was actually just, not. I was trying to walk you into that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I wrote a joke about him, and I didn't... Uh, like, I, I, it was on accident. I didn't yeah. know I'd ever meet him. And then he was at one of my shows, and I was like, dude, I wrote a joke about you a long time ago. You remember the joke. Do I? Yeah, I'm certain you do. Um, I watched the, the, the trailer for Murder Ball in a theater. It was they, Someone played the trailer, and or with, with a lot of people. I don't know where I remember where it was. 
And sometimes I mishear things and it makes me laugh. And Mark, Mark Zupan got paralyzed because he fell asleep in the back of a truck. He got drunk, fell asleep in the back of the truck, flew out of the truck. That's how he got paralyzed. That's not a funny story. When you hear that, that's kind of sad. Yeah. I misheard it and I thought he said I was paralyzed from the waist up. <laughs> and I couldn't stop laughing at the idea of a guy just could walk around but couldn't use the top of him. <laughs> And I couldn't stop laughing. And the fact that I was laughing at that inappropriate time yeah. made me laugh even harder. And Leanne's like, fucking stop. It's not nothing about this is funny. Yeah. And I couldn't stop laughing. And everyone thought I was an asshole. I mean, I told it to him on stage. We were wasted. And uh, he laughed so hard he fell out of his chair. He did? Yeah, he's the fucking best, man. Yeah, that, Mark Zupan. If you've never seen Murder Ball. Murder Ball's a great fucking great documentary. Great doc, man. Great um, fucking documentary. It really is really, really good. So um, so then what, what do we start to owe about what instead of just losing? I guess you'd have to lose weight. Just stop using your legs so your dick looks bigger. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, and about my, my getting around. I also do. I do PT three days a week. I do OT twice a week. Did and you, I, did I you, work out five days a week. Let's talk. Let's talk about this. Yeah. Hold on. Put a pin on where, where we were. Okay. Let's go back for a second. Were there moments in this injury where you thought, I may not know life like I did before. I think brief moments like there's, there's a whole thing. I mean, you go through so many emotions and the mental like toll it takes on you at certain times, you know, like sometimes it's in the hospital, sometimes it's in recovery. There's times now where like, I'll forget for a second that I'm, you know, still healing and I'll just want to do something quickly. I did it the other day and I just, I jammed my, my leg down too hard. And I was like, Oh, cause like, you basically are feeling scar tissue ripping inside your knee. And I was like, like my eyes water. And I was like, oh, and then that day I just basically had to ice my, like I couldn't really use it anymore. I just fucked it up for the day. But oh, I shit. mean, there's, do you there's, realize how bad I would have been if that had been me? Like, I don't have that. I don't think I have that like go get him attitude where I would have fucking wallowed hmm. in misery. Certain I would have, had a very hard time getting off pills. Yeah, the pills thing, you got to get off of it like pretty quickly. I mean, as soon as, as you know, what did it for me that wasn't even the pills. It was it was the constipation that they cause. Because really? I was, by the time I took my third shit with like where I had to have help and I was like so miserable with it, that next day when they were like, here's your oxy, I was like, I don't want it. And they're like, oh, are you not in pain? I was like, I don't care. I don't want to do the, the constipation again oh for real because i wasn't shitting like three and four days at a time oh i never cared about that i i i just found the video I got so upset about one it. of my favorite things on the new iphone is when you go to this and it goes one year ago today yeah yeah and you find pictures that like a year ago today i must have been watching a sunset somewhere right? yeah yeah and you're like oh fuck where was that you try to remember it well one of the pictures i found it was a video that i I don't know how it got on my phone and I don't know where I did it, but I did it in North Carolina and it was right after I, the day I fell off the waterfall. Yeah. It was that night and I was loaded up. I had been drinking and I was on oxys and all of the pills, like the fucking Dilaudid. Yeah. I was taking, I was taking four milligrams of Valium. That's Type in what a prescription of Valium should be. I was taking four milligrams of Valium and I just wasn't thinking and I was drinking and I was in so That's much pain. A, such a great combo, though. And I did a, I did a video of me in a Confederate hat, like a Confederate Civil War hat. I'm because we had done a, uh, we had done a Civil War reenactment that mm -hmm, day, mm -hmm. and I tried to get through it, and I had a Civil War Confederate hat on, and I'm doing a video talking about the injury, and I was looking at myself, going, I can't remember being that day i can't like yeah it's amazing when you're not hurt you can't remember being hurt or when you're not heartbroken you can't remember being heartbroken that's one that's good right what when you when you're heartbroken you get heartbroken it's so miserable and you know we, i was talking about how when you're there is a point where somebody goes they bring up the girl they say sarah and you go oh, i remember that she broke my heart <sighs> but then you go like, does it, do you still feel that way? And you're like, thank God, no. Like, and you tell just, other people, gone. It's you gone. tell other people one day you'll miss the heartbreak. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's true. That's true. Yeah. But I mean, heartbreak feels, it's so, it's, it feels like your soul's being ripped out of you. Right? 
Like, oh, it's the most devastating feeling. It's, it's the same. Did feeling. we find what a uh, Valium dosage is? What it's supposed to be? Usual dosage. Can you scroll in on that? Two to four milligrams. Okay. So okay. four milligrams sounds right. It's just two to oh. ten milligrams. Two to four times daily. Okay, two milligrams to ten milligrams. Two to four times daily. I just took, I was that's four that's times management of disorders. Okay. Oh. <laughs> um, symptomatic relief. Acute alcohol withdrawal. Wait, there what's that one? Ten milligrams. Ten three milligrams. Or f- three or four times during the first twenty-four hours, reducing it five milligrams as needed. Okay. Wow, that's so funny. Uh, it's the same. It's the same. I. It's the same as working out. Since we're talking about working out a little bit, it's the same as working out because, so the day. You work out, you're like, you're let you get done the hard workout, your legs tremble and your arms are trembling and you like go to get in your car and you kind of collapse into it. Yeah. And then the next morning you wake up, you go to take a piss and you can't sit on the toilet because your legs hurt. Yeah. And then there's a moment where you're like, I'm like fucking not moving at all. So is your, is your training right now? Are you, is the, like usually with a trainer, there's like a goal. Are you like, I'm trying to, I'm trying to get so that I'm not completely obese I, 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 what what i was trying to get at one point was fucking jacked right because mm-hmm. i think i thought it for the for whatever things weirdly you you do have a frame that i think if you do if you do the exercise and the diet intensely to a t i think you could actually pop seriously i'm i'm i'm, I'm, I'm but I'm, you got to do the diet I, the, I'm so diet. right now I'm doing trifecta diets. I just do their meal plan. Mm-hmm. I do three trifectas a day. God, you'll be insufferable. It'll oh, be so fucking exhausting jacked. to be around, dude. I already, <laughs> I already see a difference, like right here, uh-huh. just from doing like. It's interesting a how months of this man coachable I am too because yeah. I get. So we're the other day we're doing this this round. It's it's but it sounds so pussy for and I understand that, but it's ten push ups. Uh, 10 push-ups, 10 squats, 10 like reach-ups, right? And then 10 dips. And so, and it's rounds of like three rounds. So it's it's like quick. My brain is such, I'm such a meathead. Whatever my, my wiring is, is so bro that I go, my brain goes, well, as soon as I get to five, I hear my brain going, come on, bitch, you're halfway. And I'm like, I'm like, who the, where have you been? for a while yeah and it's it's such a fucking meathead and then i can't help it you i push what? myself to throw up almost yeah. every time you know i mean everybody has a di- like has different things right where they get, you know i'll think of like coaches and that i've had in the past and like different sports i've played in and sometimes i'll i'll try to get myself upset when i'm working out and i'll think of a time where i was slighted and i got really upset or somebody disrespected me. Oh, or, that's what I'm doing today. And I and like it'll sometimes it'll fire me up. I'm doing that today. But you know, you always have your own references. One time I was talking to Rogan about we were like we were working out together in a hotel, in a hotel gym, and um, you know we're we're going through whatever we're doing different stations, and then you know it was it was towards the end of the workout, and I made some comment about how he was. Uh, working out or something or how he was pushing himself and he was like you know when i work out i always and he, he was like looking at me you know like we're all sweaty and stuff he goes i when i work out i think about that someone's trying to kill me and that's how i that's what i push up against and i was like what and he goes yeah i, I just i imagine that someone's trying to kill me and that's as i push through the thing i was Do like you realize okay. I, how little we have in common <laughs> but it makes when you see him you're like oh that makes sense he works out like someone's trying to kill him you know i i i don't like i don't whatever i don't like uh idolizing certain yeah. statements or things i don't and i don't want to put joe's shit out there like this yeah but when uh i'll just say very brand blandly when Chappelle got um covid yeah i texted joe i think you may you might have been on that text chain. Yeah, I'm not gonna say what he said, but what he said was such a mind frame on life. Yeah, that I have used that that exact mind frame. Yeah, I have said I want to be like that. Like I when 
when I said, hey, man, are you okay? I'm just checking to see. I know Chappelle got COVID. And mm-hmm. His response was so, so, of course. That's it was what so him. Yeah, it was yeah. so Joe. Well, that's the difference is that, you know, he's be- like, we know the guy that has become like this huge influencer in in. In in so many fields, yeah, yeah, in, yeah. We're talking in in psychedelics, in 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 extraterrestrials, in politics, and online social justice, entertainment, online yeah, entertainment, yeah. and in fitness, yeah, and in supplements. I mean, I'm taking what he takes every day. Yeah, I feel sick to my stomach. Yeah, like he his vitamin regimen is nauseating. And bro, I tell you, he was like that ten years ago. This episode of Two Bears One Cave is brought to you. By Manscaped. Fellas, we are in the thick of winter and a storm's a brewing. It looks like one to three inches are in the forecast when you trim that hibernation bush that's been that's taking place in your pants. <laughs> Luckily, our partners at Manscaped specialize in products to make sure you're walking around town with beautiful snowballs. Manscaped is here to provide you the best tools for your grooming experience. The Lawnmower 3.0 trimmer is the best hygiene tool for the modern man. It really is nice to trim you know, on your balls, down the shaft, around the taint, all the way to your hole and know that it's, it's effective. It's got the the newest technology and you're not going to gouge yourself open and bleed all over your testicles and sheets. Uh, don't get cold feet this winter, get 20% off and free shipping by going to manscaped.com slash bears, 20% off with free shipping by going to manscaped.com slash bears. That's 20% off with free shipping by going to manscaped.com slash bears. Thanks, Manscaped, for making our winter wieners look so good. We deserve to know what we're putting in our bodies and why, especially when it comes to something we take every day. That's why I love Ritual. Ritual is a multivitamin reimagined. A multivitamin should contain key nutrients and forms your body can actually use to help fill in the gaps in your diet. It's traceable, so you always know what nutrients you're taking and where they come from, from thanks to Ritual's one-of-a-kind visible supply chain. It's designed with your life stages in my mind. Now it's available for men, women, teens. It's a multivitamin specifically designed to help develop your support system for the different stages you may be in your life. Ritual makes healthy habits easy. Your multivitamins are delivered to your door every month with free shipping always. You can start Start or snooze or cancel the subscription at any time. And if you don't love Ritual within your first month, they'll refund your first order. Get the key nutrients nutrients without the BS. Ritual is offering our listeners 10% off during your first three months. Visit Ritual, ritual.com slash bears to start your ritual today. When I was doing the road with him like 10, 10 years ago, 10 plus years ago, I mean, same guy. He would have, he would travel like this bag was huge and open it and fucking vitamins pour out of it. Like he, and you know, always on top of his diet, his exercise, like he's, he's never wavered from that. I, I have such a different mindset. I literally got on the treadmill this morning and I said, um, I said, this is what my brain said. I not, I hope someone's not trying to kill me. I'm going to, I'm going to just pretend I'm running away from a murder. I thought, hope I T-bowed something good. I hope I got something good on the DVR to jog to. Uh-huh. Thank God Adam Richmond's got a new fucking show. Yeah. So I fucking watch that motherfucker. And then I was like, I was like, mm, I'm doing two workouts a day. Maybe I'll order uh, Domino's and Pizza Hut. <laughs> <laughs> That's how you get jacked, dude. And then I was like, if I know that I get a treat at the end of the day, I get Domino's and Pizza Hut and I get to taste test them with my daughters. I'm going to get two pizzas. Okay. Yeah. First of all, okay, hold on a second. We're going to get the deep dish Domino because that's the, or Pizza Hut. We're going to get the thin crust Pizza Hut. Then we're going to get the Brooklyn pie from Domino's and then we're going to get regular pie from Domino's and we're all going to taste. And I'm like, what the fuck's wrong with my brain? Yeah. Like that's where my brain is. I, I think of Joe's text to me that day, I, that morning. I was, you know me with the exposure of COVID. I yeah. get very fucked up. Yeah. And I can sometimes, I wake up and I go, do I have it? Do I have it? Do I have it? I mean, that, that anxiety just alone has been somewhat debilitating. I just got chills right now and I was like, either I'm getting COVID or that was a cool moment, mm-hmm. you know? <laughs> I want Joe's, I want, jo- I would love for Joe's voice to be in my head instead of mine. Sometimes. He's got a huge podcast. You can listen to him all the time. I have, I got to be honest with you. I'm having a hard time with the whole Spotify thing. Really? Yeah. What about it? I like, you know, I'm obsessed with Joe's, but I I couldn't get it. I opened Spotify and I clicked it and it just brought me to podcasts and then I clicked Joe's and then it took me to like Joe introducing his podcast Mm -hmm. and then I just gave up. I was like, fuck, 
And yeah. I was like, and then I said to Leanne, I was like, hey, can I see Isla's phone? And then, because Isla's got Spotify premium. Mm-hmm. And I could pull it up. And I was like, can you get me on the family plan? It was so fucking angry. Yeah. That I, I got to just sit and focus and get it. Because he he did podcasts with, he's doing great podcasts. He is, he is. Yeah. And, I'm, and I'm sitting there going like, it's just, I'm a, I'm a creature of habit. So I get, I'll tell you what podcast I'm obsessed with right now. What? Obsessed with. What? Revolutions. Oh. By Mike Duncan. Have you heard this? No, the apology one though. The Apology Podcast, that is the fucking shit. What's the apology? Hold on. Oh, it's so good. Hold on. Write down Mike Duncan, uh, Revolutions, because this has a lot to do with you. Okay. Now start me on the apology. Can you pull up an image of the Apology Line podcast? Oh, please say it's Americans Apology. There apology. it is. Wonder, that one. That one. The Apology Line. So this profiles... In the 1980s, it started in 1980 in New York. They put up flyers in the city where you could call and leave an apology to anybody. And they would say, don't give out any personal information. We're going to play it publicly. And then they would play people apologizing for anything. Like, I stole this thing. I was, uh, I, um, and I left that person hanging. I, I didn't call him back. A murder. I, I murdered this guy. No. Yes. And it just how it kind of unravels it's really really captivating fantastic i want to switch though because i got distracted wait, i got no, distracted no, what? No, wait, no, what? no 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 what take but hang on stop what what you don't get to do this hold on oh god damn it okay i want to go okay so just keep our notes on the side yeah, and yeah, then yeah. Then write the, our yeah, notes yeah yeah and then hold oh, god damn it uh, i gotta tell you something else first okay okay the apology line download it's fantastic. Right, let me hang on. Let me just get it and down. I'm gonna forget. Okay. Apology line. The All apology right. I'm line. downloaded. This is the thing that I didn't want to forget to tell you. The two things that I've seen recently that are subscribed. Tremendous. I mean, really, really good. Okay. One is on Hulu called In and of Itself. Have you seen that? Uh-uh. You I have to watch this. So funny when you said write down in and of itself. I was like, yeah, I don't know what that means either. In and of itself. I don't it's know basically... what in and of itself means. Okay. I don't know what it, like me, I meaning when you say in and of itself, I don't know what you're saying. Well, it's a. No, 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 no. I meant when someone goes in and of itself in a sentence. Yeah. I don't know what that means. <laughs> okay. What does that mean? In and of itself. Just what does that mean in and of itself? That we are discussing this one. Use sentence. it in a sentence. Use it in a sentence. Pizza Hut in and of itself. Pizza Hut in and of itself is better than Domino's. Is sure. that a sentence? And yeah, then what does that mean? That in its purest form, what you're saying is, oh, there you go. Oh, I got to pick my nose. On its own, by its very nature. Why wouldn't you say on its own? I mean, we have a whole vocabulary. Do you ever go to we pick can. your nose and shove a booger higher up your nose? That's happening. And you're like, yeah. oh, great. Now yeah. I'm fucking waiting for that. Where's that one? Up. I just pushed it up. I just went, <laughs> and it's up there. And I'm like, now's when I wish I had an uh, infant finger, okay. like a baby finger to yeah, go up there. Yeah. God. Imagine okay. if Warren picked your nose with those hands. Oh, Imagine if he was a dentist. He just, fucking just gagged you out. You know how you were talking about how he touches hard? Yeah. He only touched my affected arm and leg. <laughs> only. During the game, watch watch that uh watch the the the, the live we did. The two bears one stab, but he was like, ha! and I was like and then when God. we were <laughs> when we were at that barbecue, he was like, ah, and he would lay on my left knee. And I was like, oh, <laughs> do I tell him it hurts? <laughs> I love that he was mocking me for being in a tornado. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he was like, you were in the tornado. I'm going to die. And I was like, <laughs> a lot of people scared. feel that. <laughs> yeah. No. All right. In and of itself. Let me tell you about this real quick. Yeah. Pull up the image uh, on the screen of it. So this guy, Derek, um, you have the image? There we go. This guy has no nose. Delgadio. Here's the thing. I don't even want to. I don't want to sell you on it too hard. I don't want to get because it's so spectacular. Is it a podcast? No, this is a one man show. It's on Hulu. Oh, it's on Hulu. I was like, I'm not going to fucking Hollywood. It's a it's it's on who it's on Hulu. It's a one man show that is it's all about. I, I would say the premise is identity and how basically we are complicated layer beings i'll say this it's a work of art the show yeah yeah it's like it's a masterpiece i i I would call it a masterpiece frank oz i think directed it and you don't want to tell me too much i don't want to tell you too much tell me something about if you tell me something about derek delgado 
do I know then know what this is? I th- here's the thing. I don't even want to like, <sighs> I don't feel like telling you that it, it, it's such a special show that giving things away does a disservice to the show. You know, like it does a disservice okay. to the show. Okay. I'll tell you All more right. about the other thing I've been watching. Cause I feel like th- that makes more sense in this type of show. It's best to just go watch it. Okay. Hold on. I'm going to text it to Leanne. Okay. And what, could I watch it with Leanne? Mm-hmm. In and of itself. On Hulu. Uh, what's that mean? And then <laughs> yeah. on Hulu. And you can also say, you, did you know that in and of itself also means by its very nature? We, I'll, so, tell you, I'll tell you what we, I'll tell you what we watched. So you're not going to like it because it's a little like teen girl stuff. We just watched The Wilds. Mm-hmm. And it's like, is that horrible having to watch teen girl stuff? No, all the time? you know what you do? You end up finding a way to connect with your daughters and getting into shit like that. Mm-hmm. We were like, oh, cool. You just can't say certain shit like, oh, I'd fuck that one. And then she, they'd be like, dad, she's 17. And you're like, oh, <laughs> never mind. I mean, the I have wilds. the thing right now. My kids are uh, obviously super young. And like what I do is I, I just walk by when he's watching a show, my five-year-old. And I go, oh, this is my favorite show. And he goes, it's my favorite show. <laughs> and he gets pissed. <laughs> that's, that's really fun to do. All right, here's the other thing that I've seen that is fucking unbelievable. Okay, and by the way, I'm not done talking about the revolutions because I have a lot I want to share with you. Keep going. Yeah, yeah, okay. And the Adam Richmond show I want to talk. Okay, keep going. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got to watch 000, zero okay. on Amazon Prime. Oh, please tell me it's time travel. It's not. Ah. Oh. But this is an epic fucking show, man. What is it? Okay. Zero, zero, zero is based on an Italian series. Called and, Settle, Settle, Settle? I think so. And uh, it's filmed. I mean, this, is, this has to have a $100 million budget. You think there's a guy right at the same time in Spain going, oh, I guess I'm not going to sell my, my new screenplay, Zorro, Zorro, Zorro. <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, this is filmed in Calabria, Italy, Monterey, Mexico, New Orleans, Senegal, and Morocco. It's like a fucking okay. Mission Impossible. Well, I'm going to hit pause right there. Do I have to read it? Three, two times, yes. Subtitles. Not the whole series. Okay. okay. It's a series. It's a series. Okay. It's a series that follows it one follows, man. It's, it's, who... it's drug trade. It's oh. international drug trade. Okay, writing But it's zero, not zero, zero. familiar. You don't feel like, oh, I'm watching one of these shows again. It's such a unique take. The writing. They use drug trade to drive story, not to be story. So the story really is in the characters. And the, you get to know each of the groups really well. The Italian group the Americans and the Mexicans. And each of them has unique characters and story that's phenomenal. The writing, the acting is, and the action, like the set pieces, the action in this thing is like, it's fucking born identity level pull up shit. The, pull up the actors in 000. Let's see what they look like. Yeah, there's they're they're gorgeous men. young men. I'm in. Okay. Let's judge them based on the actors. Andrea Risenborough, hot. Mm-hmm. Dane Dahani, I, I've seen that guy before, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, and Giuseppe the Domenico. I love Giuseppe. Harold Torres. He looks like a young Benicio del Toro. Oh, Gabriel Byrne. Yes, fucking he's in love it. Gabriel Byrne. He's in it. Fucking love Gabriel Byrne. Uh, Adriano, I liked his earlier work. Diego Cantana, I liked him on Entourage. Yeah. Francesca. Okay, it's okay, such, okay, okay. Such... I'm gonna like this because you know what this is. What? You know what I love about something like this. What? And this is how American I am. I don't know any of these people, yeah. but I bet they're also still actors in their countries. Good job. You put that together real well. I bet they're good actors in their countries, yep. and I'll come at it going, who's this guy who's not speaking English but murdering it? So good. It's so... It's it's incredible. Zero, it really zero, is zero. impressive, man. It's impressive. Can, can I read the Wikipedia log line? Sure. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. Zero, 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 Wikipedia. Wikipedia. Oh, you've already Wikipedia. Oh, wrong side, wrong side. Wrong side. Oh, go to the okay. left. Yeah, click that. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Make that bigger. Let's see. Yeah. Okay. Uh, it's based on the book of the same name. There's a book? I could read yeah, this? A study of the business around the drug cocaine uh, covering its movement across continents. So basically, like the way that this thing starts, I'll tell you this part. Yeah. I'm not giving, I'm not okay. ruining it for okay, you. Okay, good. Italian mafia yeah. in Calabria is buying massive amounts of cocaine from the cartel in Mexico. And so how do you get a massive amount of cocaine from Mexico to Italy? A submarine. A ship. Ship. And so the, the broker 
is the, Amer the Americans are the ship brokers. So that's the connective tissue between the Mexicans and the Italians. And basically some chaos ensues in this massive shipment of the cocaine from oh i can't wait i can't wait i love hearing good shit this thing is it's an impressive impressive show man infighting oh my god i mean the drama it's phenomenal it's phenomenal oh this is gonna be okay i'm excited oh yeah there's huge there's also huge se sequences in arabic uh yeah there's some french in there um it's it's really really i mean yeah there's there's a huge there's a whole bunch of shit in italian calabrian spanish english it's all over oh it feels like you're it feels like you're in like a born kind of you know world like jason Bourne shit you know dude uh i'm in i'm in zero 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 and you got and i will if you have daughters if you have teen daughters i've been trying to find the budget good. of this because i like when you the watch budget. it you're like the budget has to be it has to be a hundred million dollar show uh, dude every episode you're like what the fuck they how much did this cost to shoot which God. I don't know. I so appreciate as a consumer, you know. Oh, oh, oh! I like always say. I've always said. I've always said. You put a hundred thousand dollars into a movie. Yeah. You're getting my money immediately. Hundred thousand. Like, a hundred or a million, million, yeah, yeah. million. You put a hundred million into a movie. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. I appreciate exactly. it. Exactly. I'm the fucking idiot in the movie theater going. Whoa. Well, I mean, I get it. I get it too. When you when you watch certain movies, you go, I get what was written on paper and the concept, and they don't have a budget. And they try to make it work, and sometimes you're like, they did what they could, and I and I, they still make it work. And sometimes you're like, it just looks like shit. This looks sh shitty and cheap and whatever. Yeah. And this, I mean, I think Jeff Bezos sold a brick to make this one. This is like, it's it's really really good. You can't find the budget. I I, I just tried googling zero zero zero, you know, uh, yeah, yeah. Amazon budget, and sometimes they release budgets and they they tell you that you know. Yeah, you can look up certain shows and they'll tell you what the. No production... wait, you go to. Oh, I get. I bet because it's a series, the budget gets complicated. Well, I mean, it could be released. They they could if they wanted to, but I I think they're that they're not saying it. I mean, it might be because they're like we're spending two hundred million. I cannot and... wait. Yeah. yeah, I cannot wait to see this show. I cannot. I love I mean... finding good shit. I love. You know what I love? I love when I love when I go. Hey, wait! I never knew about it. Like it's so cool. To not know about something, then find it and be like, oh, and yeah. then go like, I got a whole bunch of new shit. Yeah. Yeah. What are you yeah. laughing about in there? You. Fucking. So wait, what's the, um, what's Mike Duncan revolution? Oh, 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 okay. Okay. This is, so, so, you know, I was obsessed with like Winston Churchill for a period of time. And yeah. then I was obsessed with history, history, history. <laughs> yes. So like, I'm, so I got yes. totally into world war. Is that what he looks like? Interesting. I got really obsessed with World War One, World War Two. The, the idea that I didn't really know how Europe was structured before World War One mm -hmm. was was like mind blowing to me that I didn't that I didn't I didn't know that there weren't all these countries. That it was just like the just a big chunk here, a big chunk here, a big chunk there, I, and like certain things where I was like, "Fuck, man, why didn't I? Not why didn't I know about it? Like why didn't I care? Like I didn't even." It never even got on my radar that I gave a fuck about Europe, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then I started listening to this, and I was like, well, shit, that's how they got... That is why the cause of Germany going back to war in World War II was that they had all these places that had been taken from them, but Germans still lived there. There were people, German people, that was taken away from them, and that's why they went back going for these... And then once, once they started, they're like, well, fuck it, let's take over everything, make everything Germany. And then... When Russia, at the end of World War II, Ru Russia was like, fuck you, now this is ours. And now this is all communist. And like all that shit just blew me away. And then I'm sitting there and I go, I don't, I don't know a lot about Europe. And I go, I literally said, so wait, how the fuck did they make South America? And I was like, like I, I have an idea that like some Spaniards rolled in and got and gave everyone the flu. <laughs> And then, and then, and then the Incas poured gold down their throats. Like, that's what I know about South America. Mm -hmm. So I was like, all right, I bet there was like some cool. And then, and, and I just did this podcast with Danielle, Dan, Daniel, Daniel Bellelli, who was on Rogan. Mm -hmm. I had him on my podcast just talking about history. And he was like, yeah, you got to check out Mike Duncan's revolutions. And I was like, what's that? He's like, it's just about revolutions. And I was like, 
So what we're going through in our country with what happened at the Capitol and stuff, I was kind of, I'd never seen something like that happen in our country. With all the uprisings that's been going on, all these ideas of different revolutions, I was like, wait. And I got really blown away at the idea that Stalin and Lenin were basically, honestly, the same guys that stormed the Capitol. They, they really were. Anyone who starts a revolution is starts off as like, fuck this. And then I couldn't help but notice that I was, because I didn't, stand with those guys that went raised the capital that i was ultimately all these monarchies were that was like fuck you it should be the like it was like i wasn't a part of the revolution yeah but all we know about these revolutions that win so i was like and then they're like you got to hear about all the revolutions in south america and i was like there were revolutions and then they're like and then the someone's like yeah it was all spanish owned yeah like span spain had all of it and Dude, I know that I'm fucking this up when I tell it, but the forward thinking that happened during those revolutions was so against everything that was going on in America. It's the cause of our civil war, the predominantly the ab abolishment of slavery. Like the, it was this guy, Simone Bolivar was a bad motherfucker, yeah. a bad type in Simone Bolivar. He goes through. And basically, Tom wins every fucking war the motherfucker touches. And I'm just... You heard about this on Revolutions? On Revolutions. Dude, this guy, Mike Duncan, knows how to do a fucking podcast. What he does is he does 30-minute chunks and just breaks everything down. And then he gives you these little seeds. He's like, don't let me get started on Gregor McGregor. He's a different story. He's a different podcast, all this stuff. Then I type in Gregor McGregor. Gregor McGregor was this Scottishman who basically sold everyone on the fact that he had discovered an island and he wanted them to invest in the island. There's no fucking island. <laughs> the fucking... And then this motherfucker... And by the way, now I'm sitting there going, how do I... I've never heard of this guy, right? And then, and then this guy goes out. He's basically like a Ponzi scheme fucking captain. He's bigger than Bernie Madoff ever was. He gets kicked out of everywhere because everyone's like, fuck this guy. He does it over and over again. Then he goes back. Simone Bolivar dies. He goes back and everyone's like, oh shit, it's Gregor McGregor. He's in a brand new territory, no social media. Everyone forgot he got canceled. And he's like, you're a badass motherfucker. We need to give you money. Gives him money, lives the rest of his life like a fucking millionaire. It was, it is, I get so fucking fascinated by this shit where I'm literally listening to them. You know, can I tell you what? This is why I wanted to talk to you about it. Hold on. Peru, right? Yeah. So do you know why? Peru's such a badass fucking place. Why? Because in order to conquer Peru, mm -hmm. you got to get up to their level. Yeah. You mean in the Andes? In the Andes. Mm -hmm. So if you're the Peruvian army and you're up, what's what type in the altitude of Lima? Lima's probably not that high, but. Uh, no, it's like sea level. Uh, yeah. Type in the altitude. So like what the, Cusco is, is up in the mountains. Cusco. So, yeah. so 505 so do feet. Alt do doable. altitude of Cusco. C-U-S-Z-C-U-Z-C-O. Is that these guys would go up to so? Oh, it's the U.S. Sorry, eleven thousand one hundred. Like eleven thousand. So, in, so what they do is these so armies. That's, what is that? That's two miles. Oh yeah, that's undoable. Yeah, that's undoable. So what would happen was, these people, La Paz is eleven, twelve, almost twelve thousand. Yeah, but then we're, but like switching countries. I don't even know where La Paz is. Bolivia. So, oh, Bolivia. Say, I, I, that was Let's by the way. Back. I think that was all Peru back then. Oh, okay. Or, or it's called uh, La, La Granada, La River, uh, something. Anyway, what would happen is they'd be like, come on, let's go get them. Like these fucking armies would be like, let's go get them. And they'd be like, sure, sure, come on up here. And then they'd all fucking die from altitude sickness. This episode of Two Bears, One Cave is brought to you by Viore. These guys, I swear to you, they have this down. You know how there's, there's workout gear and then there's like comfortable casual gear and you're, you're you know, you always wish that like, oh, I could work out in this, but I wish it was more comfortable. These guys actually did it. This stuff, I mean, they sent, they sent me a grip of stuff. T-shirts, hoodies, Oh, their hats, shirts are so fucking comfortable. Man, and that's the thing is you can do like, it's lounge wear or you can go do yoga, lift weights. Throw it on in the morning. Yeah. Go drop off your kids at school. Do everything. Hang out, go to the coffee shop, get on the treadmill, same clothes. Super versatile, comfortable, uh, designed to look great in everyday um, situations. You, you can work out in it. And like I said, you can do anything else you want in it. They have all types. I mean, for women, men's, they have the uh, the core short, the men's uh, ponto. ponto. Yes. 
uh, women's daily joggers. They have it all. Uh, Viore is an investment in your happiness. For our listeners, they are offering 20% off your first purchase. Get yourself some of the most comfortable and versatile clothing on the planet at vioreclothing.com slash bears. That's V-U-O-R-I clothing.com slash bears. Not only will you receive 20% off your first purchase, but enjoy free shipping on any U.S. orders over $75 and free returns. Go to vioreclothing.com slash bears and discover the versatility of Viore clothing. But you know, though, that when Pizarro and the Spaniards went to... No, by the way, no, I don't. And tell me everything. Francisco Pizarro? Don't know him. The Spanish... No, yo no sé. This is pretty good. Spanish conquistador. He arrived with like 80 men and they went and defeated like 60,000 Incans. Um, now, he was a sadistic, I mean, completely psychopathic violent evil son of a bitch really oh man they would like uh he and his you know other spicks they would they would go up and just chop um arms off of uh like incans for fun and like Dude. just like just for like just to have a good time just torture dismember they got they told um what was his name is it uh atahualpa the the so wait, how do you how do you know about this because your mom's peruvian yeah i mean you just hear about it a lot you know like, i've never heard about it ever well i mean yeah that's probably why i heard about it more but i remember there's a story there's, it, I mean, they'll tell you this historically that that he and his men you know they went and they were like initially like welcomed by the incans and there's like 80 of them and there's tens of thousands of incans and so pizarro was like you know they these, they, they find out they have gold and everything, right? Like so much. Yeah. So he and his men are like, we want a room full, like this high and this high in order to give you back your king. I think they took Atahualpa. I think that was his name. And they provided, a, they did it. They, they gave them like a room full, like floor to ceiling gold. And then they, um, they tortured them. They put them into like a bat of like oil and just drowned them in the it. king? Yeah. Yeah, they they were like super super. Oh, there's some there's some books I can't read. There's some things I can't read because it's so sad. Oh about yeah, when you get and then they got sick. Of course, uh, uh, the, they brought disease, oh, which, yeah. which wiped out. And they also had um, swords and like bayonets and shit. And these guys were like, you know, they didn't have anything like that. Do you want to know? Want to know what one badass fucking Peruvian? I say Peruvian. I think because he's Peruvian. So that so uh uh. Simone Bolivar yeah. uh, is asked by Colombia. He, by the way, he ruled almost all of South America at one yeah, point. Sure. He is asked by Colombia to take a step down, just be like the dictator of, of Peru mm -hmm. for a while, and let this other guy, I think his name is Sare, be the be a soldier, be like his guy. This guy was so committed to Bolivar. And they go, listen, you got to go up and kick ass so the Spaniards are up there. And he's like, okay. And he was running, he was running. He had, didn't have as many soldiers. And then they were like, fuck it. He's like, let's go punch him in the dick. And the guy's like, you want to punch him in the dick? And one of his soldiers goes, yeah, I'll fucking watch this. Goes up, fucking shoots his horse in the head and goes, I'm not going anywhere. And they're all like, let's kill our fucking horses. And then they just fucking destroyed an army. Do you know that fucking mentality when you go? Oh, these guys are real By the way, I'm not even man. certain they had guns look back up, then. Look up uh, <laughs> it, like Pizarro's thing. Go to his Wikipedia. Because it, um, it might have the... The detail I'm looking for here. Yeah, hit that. Francisco and then, Pizarro. Yeah, it's so, amazing that that guy did so much. Yeah, scroll down. And, and I've never even heard of him. Scroll down to, uh, yeah. Is there um, the part about, yeah, the, the 3.4 there. 1532. Yeah, and who who is the guy? Because I want to make sure I, I, I can't believe. Yeah, right? Showing the defeat of his brother. Atahualpa had been resting. And it might... Uh, it might give you the detail here. Okay. Had a force of just 110 soldiers, 67 cavalry, right? He sent um, to Atahualpa in his camp, agreed to meet Pizarro the next day after the, let's see, this complacency because fewer than 200 remained as opposed to his 50,000 man army. Keep scrolling for me. How did they beat um, 50,000 men with? I'm telling you, man, it's insane. Okay. See, he, despite fulfilling his promise of filling a room, 22 by 17 feet with gold and silver. He was convicted of 12 charges that they just drew up, you know? Um, yeah. yeah. 
and uh, man, they just they savagely, they savagly decimated those people. Can I, man. The amount of backstabbing that happened back is that I thought that was a picture. No, no. The amount of oh my god, they're that's an actual oh I don't execution. Wanna, yeah, I don't yeah. see that. That's good. Um, the amount of torture, uh, Joe recommended a book one time, or maybe someone else did. I can actually tell you what the book is because I fucking have it on my, Keep all, my audio books. Yeah. It, this is the most, oh, my buddy Mans. I went to the Torture this. Museum in Lima once. Oh, for real? Oh, my God. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to see if they have any more details about that, but I don't see any more. The book, you ready? Mm hmm. Oh. This was the most disturbing book. It was called The Conquerors. How Portugal forged the first global economy mm -hmm. or empire. Okay. So this book is so horrible. It's so horrible that... About the level of... Yeah, it's like... So I, I listen to audiobooks to fall asleep. You do? So, yeah, because it reminds me of being in school. And like I can fall asleep. I don't understand how anybody can do that. By the way, I love it. And know Christina's the same way. She's like, put on something, like watch something, and then goes to sleep. Uh, if you had you... TV on when I'm trying to sleep, I'd be like, turn the fucking TV off, man. I can't sleep. Oh uh, yeah, you're like Leanne. I like to be distracted, uh, like dude. If you have silence, I, one of my the hardest I've ever slept is when we were doing construction in the house, mm -hmm. and you'd hear ranchero music and the Mexican dudes doing the construction, yeah, talking back and forth to each other, yeah, for whatever reason. Because I'm hearing it, but I, I'm not listening. Like, right. I don't know what they're saying. Right. So I'm not getting interested in the conversation. I just hear the... That adds up to me. Because I also... People listen to music. I'm like, I just start listening to the song. I wouldn't be able to fall asleep. Oh, I can't listen to like... Like, I, I try to listen to Outside. Outside, the magazine mm -hmm. has a podcast. And they told this story of this dude. I don't... I, you're going to have to find it. I'm never going to be able to tell you. This guy tells... I'm like, oh, this is a good... I just found out they have a podcast. It's about this guy, this big wave surfer. He wrote the most seminal book about big wave surfing. And he tells this story of being of surfing in Portugal. Mm -hmm. And him and his buddy getting caught outside the waves that are way too big to ride. Their boards are too small. Mm -hmm. And he tells the story of him and his buddy, how they barely survived. And I was like, I'm, I'm like fucking laying in bed going, mm, my hands are sweating. I'm like freaking out. I'm like, okay, this is not what you fall asleep to. Like the Conquerors, I used to put on the tour bus. I put on the tour bus one night, right? We, we eat. Uh, the CBD edible, the high CBD edible yeah. with a little bit of a THC. Yeah. And I'm sitting there and they're like, this Portuguese conqueror goes down the coast of Africa, says to the king, I want your, I want your daughter and I want you to bring her out yourself. Or I'm going to come in and kill all your people. And he's like, okay, okay, I got it. I got it. <laughs> oh Comes God. out oh with his God. daughter and he's like, cool. They all fuck his daughter. And then they tie him up because he's Muslim. They shove pig th pig raw pig down his throat shoving him with a fucking stick and then shit in his mouth and shoving him with a stick and they're like all right go home and the guy went home and then they came back and they're like hey we want your other daughter and he's like i'll be out there in a minute dude i'm like fuck this i cannot live oh the, like God. when you hear about the horror that's why i couldn't listen to fucking this is on your audiobook i was like yeah and I'm, I'm like fucking in my bunk going you yeah, know they shit in his mouth yeah. they shit in the guy's fucking mouth and shoved it down with a stick with pork and who's the guy Fucking I, some fucking Portuguese dude. I don't even know. I couldn't listen. I was like, I can't listen to this fucking book. It's horrific. It's like the reason. Here's my question. <coughs> He's had coronavirus, everybody. Oh, fuck. Here's my question. Yeah. I sometimes wonder, and this is a, uh, I remember this is a brand new thought. I sometimes wonder some of these history books when you read them. Yeah. <clears throat> they come off a little racist. Yeah. Like, like you're like, ah, uh, you're like, Hey, it's, it's almost like back then people weren't like all about equality. <laughs> yeah. No, it's like, uh, no, 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 no. Even when you read them, yeah, you're reading them and you're like, wow, it sounds like the Indians had it coming, you know? And then you're like, and then you're like, wait, this was written by an 80 year old white man in 1980. Maybe he was like, like, so you start like Joe recommended a book about native Americans where I kept, feeling like hey man i'm losing my compassion for native americans in this book it really? makes them sound really bad and i'm like i know that's not the real story but as i'm reading this i'm like wait they just cut the girl's nose off you're like is and you're this like, what the fuck yeah no, like, that and so sense. i wonder i wonder if because it was written by who it's written 
if it's skewed as like as like yeah yeah like if you know it's like not the most not I'm trying to think of the right analogy it's like it's like hip hop okay okay there wasn't a ton of progressive hip hop when we were kids like, okay it was all like fuck this bitch suck my dick bitches ain't hoes but shit mm -hmm. if, you know if my friends can't have none I don't want none yeah like uh, cool shit yeah yeah I'm gonna kill that motherfucker yeah. I'll kill your whole crew yeah and then you go well of course that was it was written by young affected inner city kids yeah who who that was the life they were living and then you, as they get older they're like yeah, I wouldn't write that now right right yeah sure well then you're looking at take the opposite of that history books written by old white men and they're like old white men tend to have some similar viewpoints and they're like yeah the Indians were pretty bad guys like custard had like a, you know, mm -hmm. and so you start going like, well, how, then how can you trust history books? Yeah. Like I just found out you found this out. morning yeah. that the oh. Titans, Tennessee, that the Titans are like one of the oldest teams in the NFL. The the team, the Titans, the name, the Titans, right. it's one of the first, like first fucking teams back when they, they were before the NFL, like all these names. Yeah. I don't understand. So the Titans were at one point. Type in and uh, uh, type in fo football Titans because they were once the Oilers, though, right? That's what we're talking about. No, the, no, 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 no. No. So like, so like, oh, fuck. But no. that's what that that's what that's trying to tell you. Founded in fifty nine. That's really the first team. Their first team was the fifth. It was in fifty nine. But they weren't the Tennessee Titans. They weren't the Tennessee Titans. They were something else. They, weren't they whatever Houston's team was? Uh, they might the have Oilers? been the Houston Titans. You're, oh, well, yes, look, it, well, click, yeah. click that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, previously known as the Houston Oilers. Um, but they, but no, no. So that's okay. not what I mean. That's not. There what was mean. an actual team called the Titans back oh, in like the 30s. I got you. So okay. a lot of the names we know as teams right. were like were like. Uh, it was actually a fucking amazing video I watched about the history of the teams in the that played professional football. And it was talking about the teams year by year that went away yeah. and showed up. Like the Buccaneers, who just won the Super Bowl, they were originally the Los Angeles Buccaneers. Type in the Los Angeles Buccaneers. And this was the, I, I was like blown away. I didn't know, and this is where I was like, shut up. I didn't know that the Browns went away for two years. Really? Like fucking three years ago. The, well, more than that. Four, five years ago. Ten years ago. More, yeah. Look at this. So the Los Angeles Buccaneers weren't even based out of Los Angeles. They were based out of like Cincinnati, but they were that's, they were like that's where they were, and they were a team that went around. And then that was the team. So like all these old teams. So the, I never did heard. the Los Angeles Buccaneers become Tampa Bay, or did they? No, they. So they just. It's like those were acceptable names that they could take. Okay. Because they were like. Teams. But did that evolve into something? No, no, I think they just like the Bears. You know why they called the the. Chicago Bears, the Bears? No. Because of the Cubs. Oh. Yeah. And there was a What, team. to like brand it? Yeah, because they were like, we want to, we want the fans of the Cubs to become fans of the Bears. Oh, gotcha. And so, but Bears were, were football players, so were Bears. It should be tougher and I bigger. I feel like, weren't they Cardinals before that? D so, th first of all, the, the Arizona Cardinals are the oldest football team in, the, in professional but football. But weren't they the Chicago Cardinals? Type in the Los Arizona Cardinals. That this lost. is the oldest team in all of football is the Cardinals. Okay. Jesus. 1889 98. And hit that wiki. Let's see. Where did it where was it founded? Established in Chicago. See? Chicago Cardinals. I told you. Do you know the Browns were named after a guy? Who took shits, big shits. It, that was the thing. <laughs> the Browns. Right? The, the Browns. Browns. Yeah. I was like sitting here going like Shut the. Well, I remember. Fuck I remember up. having my mind blown when I was like, I don't know, sixteen, when I was told that the Lakers were from Minneapolis. Oh, and I was like, yeah, what? And then you're like, and they're oh, like, they oh yeah, they have lakes. lakes. They do have lakes. And you're like, yeah. And then they just moved. And you're like, oh, because it doesn't make. They've any been sense. trying to sell the name the Senators forever. Did you know at one point during the war, there were so few men that they combined the Steelers and the Eagles to make the Steagles. No. Do you think that's a true true or a lie? It sounds like a birdism. Type in Steagles. I can't remember if I heard this or I dreamt it. The Steagles? The Steagles. Oh, you're right. The Steagles. I was right. I knew I was right. Holy shit. The Steagles. That's hella Dude, gay. I'm like fucking sitting there going like, dude, I watched. I watched 
a video what the best was the Washington Bullets used to be a squad and they're like it's too violent of a name and there's people are dying so they became the Wizards you know I didn't know that but the Bullets was that they, they were called the Washington Bullets because there's so many shootings in DC there was a team they wanted to calm the tornadoes and one guy was like um I think we're in Tornado Alley. And they're like, yeah. oh, that's why we want to be called the Tornadoes. And yeah. he's like, yeah, but when it kills 90 people, I don't think they're going to be fans or want to wear our jerseys mm -hmm. when they've lost their family to a tornado. And they're like, Thoughtful. well, someone tells the hurricanes that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Dude, I am so fucking fascinated by that kind. Like when you go, that's what it is about history is all of a sudden you go, well, well there's the, a lot. Of, I thought I knew a lot of shit. What was the Kane uh, uh, mantra that they kept saying? Sap and Dave. Like hit big, big dicks, bust nuts, or something like that. Lick dicks, bust nuts. Big dicks, bust nuts. Big, not big dicks. No, no. no. Big. <laughs> what, type in hurricanes. Rohan Marley. Oh. Was I saying his name wrong? Yeah, Ro I think he was saying it's Rohan. And Ro you were saying I was Rohan. saying Rohan. Yeah. Well, a um, lot of people call me Bruce. I think we're good. What is it? Big hits, bust dicks, something like that. Just type. No, just leave in. Her, just we can call Dave real quick. Oh, yeah, he would definitely tell you. Um, bust dicks. Just write bust dicks. Yeah, bust. bust dicks. It's definitely, he said it's on shirts and everything. There aren't many matches for your search. Oh. Type in hurricanes, bust yeah, dicks. Yeah, Miami hurricanes. Yeah. Bust dicks. Hit stick, bust dick. There you go. Hit stick, bust dick, talk shit. There, yeah, Hit YouTube. It. I want to see that. Yeah. Hit dick, bust dick. We need a fucking saying like that. Do they say it in the video? Oh, yeah, they're going to say it right here, man. Let's hear it. I bet that's fun. These motherfuckers, they gonna die three motherfucking days, and that's what. Hit stick, bust stick, talk shit, talk shit, talk shit. That's pretty good. They're too long. I want you to look at the man beside. Yeah. Want you look at the man beside you? Is he hard? Are you hard? Grab that dude's dick. Then you're hard. Talk shit. Wait. Eat the eat shit, bust. No, not eat shit. No. Go back to it. What was it? Is it hit? What is it? Hit stick, bust shit, bust dick, talk Wait, shit. Is there any way we can get voiceover of what our fans think should be put in there? We do three things, three things, and then you just do voiceover. Eat shit, talk shit, bust dicks. We're going to eat shit, we're going to suck dick, we're going to bust nuts. Let's go on three. We're going to bust Wait, dicks. <laughs> yeah. Oh, fuck. Mm. Hold on, hold on. Go back to our list. Go back to our list. Eat shit, bust dicks. Wait, what was the Adam Richmond thing? What is that? I'm obsessed with this new show. It's the Foods That Build America. Okay, dude, can you, you know why? Do you know why Pizza Hut's crust is the way it is? First of all, do you like Pizza Hut? Yeah. Okay. No, sorry. What I like is Domino's thin crust. That's the shit that I. Are you talking about with. Brooklyn Pie thin crust? I'm talking about when you're a kid and you go, "I'll have a Domino's thin crust, whatever that is." The thin. It's like cardboard. It's not necessarily it's objectively not, good. And it's not it's and just, it's and it's not technically a pizza crust as we know pizza crust, right? It's a little crispier. Yeah, exactly. I and like that. So that so I like that a lot. This is what I learned from it, his new show. Thin and crunchy. Um it is that is a different type of bread than a than a regular pizza bread. Oh, for sure. And it was made for the Midwest. What was those those that was what thin crusty stuff? They made pizza. So pizza was unknown until like fucking 1950. Like really? no one had ever had pizza. In the you, States. Like, yeah. No, you, they had some in New York, but it was like. But a, I'm saying it was obviously a staple of probably Italy, right? When Type in when Taco Bell was formed. Type right in Taco Bell. Okay. Taco Bell was formed. These two brothers, 1962, no one had heard of pizza. No one had heard of pizza. Here. In, in the United States. Okay. These two dudes are like. Yo, we want to be like McDonald's. What can we do? They're like pizza, right? By the way, I'm. you should watch the show. I'm giving it a soft thing. So they go in and they go to make pizza dough, but they don't know how to make it. So they use French bread dough. Mm -hmm. And they make French bread, lots of sauce, which is not, this is Adam Richmond describes this a lot better. I should just call him. Have him describe it. Yeah. Well, yeah. One second. Let me take a leak and we'll do it. Real okay. Quick. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. I got to see. All right, guys, we're getting started in this new year. There's a lot of things to do. One of them might be ways to try to save money. Luckily, Policy Genius can help you kill that problem. Compare home and auto insurance rates and save up to $1,055 per year by reshopping. That's money you can put towards the things you care about. 
whatever that may be. It's actually so easy and absolutely worth your time to try doing this. Just go to policygenius.com. You answer a few quick questions about yourself and your property. They do the rest. They compare rates from all the top insurance you know, companies, progressive nationwide. They find the lowest quotes. And the best part, as I say, is that they do the switch over for you. If you're like, oh yeah, that is better. You let them know and they do the switch for you. That saves you a lot of time, the headache and the stress of doing it. If you're worried that March is around the corner and you've barely gotten anything done, take a deep breath. Policy Genius will help you make the most of this short month in minutes. Just reshop your home and auto insurance and you could save up to $1,055. Head to policygenius.com to get started right now. Policy Genius, when it comes to insurance, it's nice to get it right. If you're wiping your ass with your hands, then you're doing it wrong. <laughs> the future of toileting has arrived and it's called Tushy. It's been around forever, but it was super freaking expensive. Well, it's not super freaking expensive. Now the brand new <laughs> Hello Tushy 3.0 modern bidet attachment is here to level the playing field. It's stylish, eco-friendly, easy to install, and affordable. Hello Tushy 3.0 doesn't just clean your butt with precision stream of fresh water. It cleans itself before and after its use with the Smart Spray automatic self-cleaning nozzle. It attaches to your existing toilet, so no electricity or additional plumbing, and it cuts Toilet paper use by 80%. So Hello Tushy Bidet pays for itself within a few months because with Hello Tushy, you don't wipe at all. Just poop, spray, dry, and go. And sanitation simple. Sanitation is simple. The Schmutz Shield offers easy cleaning and the knobs are naturally antimicrobial. Already got a tush pot? Already got a tush on your pot? Upgrade to the new 3.0 model. And if you're new to the revolution, join the millions of happy Hello Tushy customers right now and have a clean butt with every flush. Go to hellotushy.com slash bears, get 10% off your order and free shipping. All right. I texted Adam Richman, but I, those texts, no one replies to a text. What do you I mean? Just FaceTime him. You're just going to aggressively FaceTime him? Yeah, right. I think that's the best way to go about it. I think you have a good relationship with him. Yeah, I'm definitely, I'm definitely cool. Let's see. FaceTime Adam Richman and he'll explain Pizza Hut to us. Okay. He's one of the smartest dudes I fucking know. Like, legit, across the board. There's some guys who know a little bit about a little bit, and uh, some guys that know a lot about a little bit. And he's then there's guys that know he knows a lot about a lot. Oh, okay. And he's he can also do... I wonder if he's probably working. By the way, this FaceTime's so close to my face right now. Yeah, it's a little scary. All right. He's not answering. Am I, I'm zero for zero on FaceTimes. It's a real aggressive move. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, really? I was. I mean, the only people I was saying that I like will just Facetime. No, no warrant. Like some people, you go cool to Facetime or I Facetime we, you. That's what I'm saying. But like, we're really like, uh, you know, we're really. I Facetime close. Joe. That's aggressive. Yeah, I always just Facetime him all the time. Does he answer? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sometimes, sometimes he doesn't. Yeah, I guess you're, you're basically basically you're going like, hey man, what are you doing right now? I want to see what you're doing right now. Yeah, oh, yeah, I didn't yeah. realize that is pretty aggressive. It is. Michelle wrote me. She goes, I'm, I'm, on, I'm going to the airplane. Yeah. Is it phone? Oh, really? Yeah, she said, yeah, yeah. Um, so let me explain. Let me explain Pizza Hut to you then. Okay. Mm -hmm. This is not, this is me regurgitating what I witnessed on, on Foods of Build America on History Channel. Yeah. Sunday nights at nine. Um, so they made, they used French bread because that's all they had. And they figured, why would we do something that people in this area aren't used to? So they make French bread. They put lots of sauce on it, lots of cheese, and they make it for Midwestern people. And Midwestern people fucking love it. And this guy makes one store, one fucking- The Taco Bell guy? One Pizza Hut. Pizza Hut. Pizza Hut. One Pizza but Hut. you said to look up Taco Bell. Oh, did I really? Yeah, that's what we looked up. We looked up Taco Bell. This is why I'm not on Foods of Build America. Um, wait, so why don't you pull up Pizza Hut for that same search? Because I was like, I don't know why we're looking at Taco Bell. <laughs> Did I really say Taco Bell? L yeah. This is why you should never hold anything against me. I mean, 1958. Close, close. Okay. So they make Pizza Hut, and then the guy who makes one store, Tom, and then he starts franchising it out after one store. One store, and he starts franchising it out. These okay. are the things that are my takeaways. But isn't it interesting? I just heard about a comparison between Pizza Hut and Domino's in oh. modern in recent times here. That'd be interesting. That Domino's right? is performing much better well, Tom, than Pizza Hut. I'd love to have this conversation with you. Domino's yeah. has nineteen thousand locations around the world. Mm -hmm. Pizza Hut has seventeen thousand locations around the world. Okay. Google that and tell me I didn't just hit that out of the park. Okay. That's called information retention. 
Wow, you really... I, I really enjoyed this show because I, I was obsessed with like going... Yeah, because, you know, we're on the tour bus one time and Andrew goes, um, yeah, 17,000 stores. Well, I was right. I, my cousin Andrew goes, I actually prefer Pizza Hut over any pizza. 18,700. I was off. But, no, no, but you're, you're very close. Yeah. The point, though, I was making is that they have been on, from what I understand, Pizza Hut has been on more of a decline, whereas Domino's has been more on a upswing. Well, they've got to be taking it in the ass right now with with... With. But Domino's have been pushing really hard their online, you know, app stuff. And yeah, you know, like, I can't get on to. I, I, I'm old school. I need to call a guy, tell him what I want. I can't just go on an app and go. I'll add this. Don't you kind I'll of feel this. like a piece of shit having a Domino's app on your phone? Because <laughs> I remember I wanted one like two years ago, and I had to do it that way. And then like opening my phone and seeing a Domino's pizza app, I was like, no, wow, <laughs> I'm not going to keep this what on my the phone. The biggest piece of shit app you have on your phone. I is. mean, it was that. <laughs> I have a Papa John's app. Yeah, no, I was like, I don't want that fucking app on my phone. I've got, uh, I've got all my airlines. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My radar comes in really handy, especially when you're doing outdoor venues. Your radar? My radar. It's an app where you can track storms. Oh. Because we would have to shut down shows because of lightning. Oh. Uncrate's a great fucking app. Calm. I use that. I have a bunch of ski slope apps from when we used to ski. No one. Leafly for marijuana sneakers yeah i got that i got a few headset apps what the fuck is clubhouse why is everyone I talking about clubhouse can, i think i got invited by a rapper yeah i got invited but what is it i think you can listen to people's conversations but who are you trying to what it says drop in on audio what, what does that even mean what is this i don't know I somebody explain know. this to me uh, you know who can explain it who tim dylan let's yeah. facetime him you ready okay See, let's see if Finn, Tim Dillon answers a FaceTime. He uses it. He invited me. Tim Dillon, new number. Yeah. Okay. Here we go. See if Tim Dillon answers a FaceTime. See who my real friends are. Yeah. This is such an aggressive. So I can't believe hosting... people don't answer FaceTimes the way I do. All right, hold on. Wide rate of clubs and virtual rooms conversation on diverse topics. Networking day and pulling. Some examples of Clubhouse are Startup Club, Fit, Black Wealth Matters, Leadership Reinvented. Does no one answer my fake fucking FaceTimes? Not today. Muslims and Friends, the, the legacy. I mean, I just don't know. So you're dropping in and just listening to a conversation? Yeah, I, wanna, I wouldn't mind dropping in on FaceTimes. Yeah. So FaceTime is a really aggressive move, huh? Yeah. Well, yeah. why would they put it on there if you can't use it? You can. You can't. Yeah, but no one answers a fucking FaceTime? Well, they're probably doing... Like, it's a real thing. Like, think about how a text usually affects you, right? You're in the middle of something, pops up, and you're like, all right, I'll hit up Bert after this thing. FaceTime is Bert's pounding on my door. Hey! Like, that's what FaceTime is. <laughs> Let's see who the most famous... You think Warren Sapp would answer a FaceTime? Yeah, for sure he will. <laughs> <laughs> now he would. Now, yeah. you think, I remember I FaceTimed Snoop on the... When we, I think when we were doing the live show. Uh, all right, Don't no one, me. no one wants to fucking Facetime me. Anyway, uh, no, put that down. Put that down. Oh yeah. Okay. So anyway, my my question is, favorite online pizza? You're saying Domino's thin crust. I mean, that's what that's that's the one I had that I liked as a kid. I, Better than Papa John's. I like it more. So there was a period where Papa John's. But you're a real pizza guy. I'm not really a pizza guy. You like you have pizza every week. Every Friday. Okay. It's pizza night. Yeah. Every Friday is pizza night, and then I order enough so that every night's pizza night. I I will. I have a hard time saying no to a errant piece of pizza. I, you know what? I, I always remember that what? I wish I had spoken up about what. Remember when we did the weight loss contest? Yeah. So the day before, so we had two weigh-ins. We weighed in like back-to-back -back days, so uh -huh. that you couldn't just do like a cut and yeah, weigh in. You had then, to be lower. Right. So we just almost died doing it two days. Later. Yeah. <laughs> so, so after the first podcast on the first day. We're going to come back the next morning to keep podcasting. And Joe goes, what do you guys want? And immediately you go, pizza. Fuck yeah. And I just went, okay. Wait, what did you want? Sweets. For real? Yeah. I, want, I wanted like donuts or like, you know what I mean? Like something That's so funny. Sugary. You brought up donuts so many. Can I, 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 I've said it to Nadav one time. God, I remember saying it to Nadav. That he, when he said he ate ice cream, and I was like, who eats ice cream? Oh, yeah, that was hilarious. And then all of a sudden, I started eating ice cream. And you're like, ice cream's good. 
it's so good <laughs> but it's not something i would treat myself to yeah so uh, but i think it's the way my brain worked well is, it's also your like you really i mean it makes sense to me that you really like pizza i'm gonna i'm gonna get i'm gonna get probably three pizzas from three different places tonight and i'm gonna sample them any idea what you're gonna have you been oh, to the oh didn't he yell at us sap about not knowing that pizza that he liked craig's was it Craig's? Yeah, Craig. He's like, we went to Craig's. And then he was like, you guys fucking even live here? Oh, yeah. <laughs> we were like, yeah, I don't know what it is. Oh, I, dude, there's a lot of pizzas. That looked like some good fucking pizza, though. Well, the best pizza they say in L.A. is Larchmont Pizza. I mean, Larchmont's okay. pretty good. Lar- pretty. How legit. do you not know all the best pizza places? You know what? Honestly, because my girls don't like uh, designer pizza. They, they want, don't like good yeah. pizza. I had the best pizza I've ever had in my entire life. Entire, entire life. Entire fucking life. Where? In Rome. Mm-hmm. We're going back to Rome again. Go, go to, I've been to Rome a lot. I know. Go to, go to uh, Rome. Best pizza in the world. Uh, I bet there's a lot of people that advertise that way. Uh, type in to do this. Do this. Let's go. Let's go. Rome pizza trip flip. So we oh. had pizza with this guy. I have trip, poor trip flips probably. Oh yeah, there you go, Rome. See if you can find the name of the pizza place if it's, if it's in there. So we had this pizza. This guy, my fuck, this is the best pizza. This guy said, uh, they go. He's make he makes the world's best pizza. He's won the pizza championships. I'm giving you all the information. I want you to find it. Okay, listen to the, what I'm saying, and then you find it. He makes the best pizza in the world. He's won the world championship at pizza making, mm-hmm. and he created a new pizza called what's the kind of pasta you have where it's like bacon egg yolk and cheese don't know but i, I mean i've had it but i don't carbonara. know the name. carbonara okay type in rome pizza carbonara championship or something trip flip whatever come on guys so <laughs> so he says we're gonna start you so i get hammered the night before because i love pizza so much pizza carbonara this guy had created ice cubes that he put on the pizza. He put the pizza, he put the bacon on raw. He put some Parmesan cheese, a little bit of olive oil. And then he'd put the an ice cube that he created and he put an egg yolk so that the ice cube didn't let the egg yolk cook. So then the egg yolk would melt the perfect amount. And when it melted, he'd pull it out and he'd stir up the egg yolk and it was pizza carbonara. And I, Tom, I made myself so sick. I mean, I, I can hear it in your mouth. <laughs> it was one of the best pe- is the best thing I've ever put in my mouth. And 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 just to be fair, he could make these pizzas. He could make these pizzas in like three minutes. He'd make a pizza in three minutes. It was so thin. It was so good. I love that. He came in and he goes, he's like, hey, what pizza you like, huh? And by the way, he was actually a pretty soft-spoken guy. Okay. He's a little overweight. He's probably not with us anymore. He's like a little. <laughs> yeah, a little older. Not, And it was. Is that is that what we're looking at? Is that the thing? I believe so. You tell me. Did you see Burt Kreischer attached to this at all? No, but this is the world champion pizza carbonara in Rome. That's what we're looking at. That's it right there, Tom. He these thin these things were so thin. At Dar Poeta is that the name? I, I'm guessing. Have you typed in Dar Poeta Burt Kreischer and seen if you come up with anything, so we can make sure that this is the guy? Hmm. No, it's no. Not, not the guy. Anyway, he would make them so quick. And he came in, and I was hungover, and I didn't eat dinner the night before because I knew we were having pizza. Yeah. Right? And they're like, you're going to have a lot of pizza, so save some space. So I get drunk as fuck, and I don't eat it. I go to sleep hungry. I come in the next morning, and he's behind the counter making himself a pizza with a glass of wine. I go, oh, my God, if I was ever going to fuck a dude, it's right now. <laughs> this guy's drinking wine at like 8 in the morning, and I, he goes, he goes, eh, you know and i'm like fucking yes. claro yeah so i start drinking wine with him and we're not even shooting yet and he goes i need a little something you know a little something and i said well yeah i don't want to spoil it though and he goes no uh, just a cheese i go yeah and he makes me just a cheese and then he takes it and he folds it in four for me and he goes there like it's a fucking sandwich and i go oh huh. i burn the roof of my mouth and i go fuck that skin that is going to be gone we're eating fucking fast hot and furious today oh you must have gotten so sick I, that's the place. What's the place? That's the fucking guy. Tom, these were the greatest pizzas I've ever had in my life. And Tom, I'm drunk at the end of the night. And I tell him I'll invest $100,000 to move you 
to Los Angeles so that we can do this in person. And he goes, it's the oven. It's the oven. The oven's so good. No take oven over there, huh? No. And I went, listen, I'll build you a brand new oven. I go, we set up on Sunset Strip. And you, they pop them out. Do you have the name of this? Times. What's the name? Tonda. 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 If you go to Rome, Pizza Tonda. There you go. Pizza Tonda. This fucking guy. Eh, way, via Valle Corteno. Oh. Pizza Tonda. How many Ooh. ratings did he have on that? Go back. You're okay. Pizza. A five star rating, eight hundred and forty five reviews. It is the greatest pizza I've ever had in my life. Hit that Tonda menu there. And then do me a on favor. Left. Go to God, the left. Damn it. I want to be on Yeah, the, yeah. Hit one of those so we can see. There's gotta be images from It'd be great if he's like, he stopped making pizza. <laughs> What's he make now? If you can type in, there's got to be something on YouTube. Pizza Tonda. Type in, go to YouTube. Type in Pizza Tonda in YouTube. Okay. And then uh, Carbonara. And then hit, because it's got to be the. Uh, it's okay. Pizza Tonda Rome. Just do that. See if something comes up. Is that his? The very top one? Is that his I shit? Know. I don't think so. No. I don't think this is something right, not, I need to do by myself. Yeah. Tom, this was the greatest pizzas I've ever well, you're had. You're making me life. actually really want pizza now. I'm definitely fucking up pizza today. Yeah. I'm fucking up. Wait, so what's your go-to in LA? Right now, across the board, uh, I, I, w right now we're Domino's. We're hardcore Domino's. <laughs> we're hardcore talking Domino's. about like I know. world-class. Dude, I got to be honest with you, though. I kind of grew up on Domino's. Do you like the thin crust, though? Do they do a Brooklyn pie? What is Brooklyn pie? Domino's Brooklyn pie. Is That's a, like the New York style? New York style, but it's even thinner, and it's kind of less calories. I do pepperoni beef Brooklyn pie, and I do onion mushroom Brooklyn pie. Now, do the kids like this pizza? I eat both of those myself. I don't know what they get. Do they like it? Oh, they like Domino's. They okay. like, and so we had a place next, near us. I won't say the name because it's right near us. What's the... Um, yeah, but, but, you're like, but you like that one or no? I love the, the Domino's Brooklyn Pie is one of my no, favorite. No, the one that's near you. Oh, I love it. I love it. But the girls, they're anything kind of a little bit out of their taste buds. And they're like, I know it's good, but um, I don't really get it. Yeah. Like, I'd rather just Domino's Hawaiian. And you're like, ugh. Isla, can I get a cheeseburger from Domino's? Cheeseburger pizza? And it's actually pretty fucking good. Oh, okay. It's actually really fucking good. And Domino's doesn't fuck anything up. What's the homeless thing you were talking about? Before? Like Steve, have you seen Steve Burns' video of... of on Instagram? No. Dude, pull up Steve Burns' Instagram. He's back from Nashville. I think he's doing a podcast now. And take a look at this video. That's the top one? Yeah. Just take a look at this video. And this is this is the state of Los Angeles right now. And this is not an exaggeration. This is just a walk through our just a street in Los Angeles. Okay. So look, so this is walking. him just walking down the street. Okay. He goes, I'd like to walk down the sidewalk, but I can't. I have to walk in the street because this is the street, is what he's saying. And now, that's what he's saying there. And then this is him walking down the street. It is straight up. Oh, like full home. tents and like full camps on the sidewalk. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, they, and it's like people have set up homes. Yeah, yeah. Like legit homes. Jesus. And it, it's like, at what point is Los Angeles, are the mayor, Eric Garcetti, and the governor, Gavin Newsom, going to realize this is on their watch? Like right. they need to, they're the only ones that can take care of that. Right. I'll say this right now to both of those motherfuckers. I will donate my time to put on any show to raise money to make this stop. But it's not good for the people doing it. Like no one wants to be homeless. Yeah. Like I, whatever the fuck. It's like, it's like do something about it. It's so bad in Los Angeles. It is bad. It is so bad that you drive through Hollywood. Well, it's in, that's the thing is that we used like LA a few years ago. You basically, you know, you're, a major city has homeless people in all different parts of the city. But, like, it was kind of, all this was kind of pushed into downtown. So, downtown in, like, the north, central, and southern parts of, like, that downtown pocket, that toy district and everything. And Skid Row. You're yeah, like, Skid Row they were just like, like, acceptable. You just don't drive like, around Yeah, there. here's a, this is a, a homeless area. And, and people were like, okay, as long as it's out of sight. And then now it's like, that's Venice can tell you it's you know brentwood has a in, huge homeless camp now the valley is it all over the valley any and it's under just, pass in the valley yeah. is is just 
It's just shanty towns. It's more like about what it indicates. Because you go like, oh, this is a epidemic that is spreading, growing. It used to be meant. Uh, it used to be, in my opinion, a mental illness problem. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's that anymore. Now I think it's that this city is so unattainable for so many people yeah. that are so down on their luck with what's going on with coronavirus that so many people are saying this is my only option. Well, it's definitely there's st definitely still a huge mental illness epidemic yeah. um, that we don't really do anything about and i think you're right that dude we drove we we drove the, the one of the homeless people the other day was like one of the music teachers at the kids school really yeah and you're like okay she wasn't crazy i mean i think her husband was on drugs but whatever yeah and so like it's just it's so bad and here's the problem so is, you got to move it where are you going to move oh, dude i'm I don't ever talk about politics. I do not know if Gavin Newsom or Eric Garcetti are Democrat or Republican. I don't know what... The, I'm sure I thought you were about to say, I don't know if they watch this podcast, but go ahead. <laughs> I bet they have their own podcast called Two Fucks Do Nothing. Yeah. Here's my point is like, I don't know what they are, so I don't mean to talk politics at all. I know nothing about their platforms, but what I will say is they have driven out a lot of my friends who could have helped raise money yeah. to help fix problems. And if they keep doing that, then this city has only one direction to go. And it's, and at a certain point, even I will have to leave. Like, like, I, and I, I, this city's gone straight downhill. Dude, you know, when Joe, I hear Joe talk about it on, on his podcast and I go, I go, I, I go, Oh, come on, Joe. You, you remember you used to love this city. Yeah. And then I drive through Hollywood the other day Dude. and I'm like, I'm like, it's not, I'm not angry about it. I look at it and I go, these are people that are not getting to live their best life. Hollywood's sad, man. Is, and and there's so, it's so much that I go, hey, Garcetti, drive once. Drive once in your own car through Hollywood. and Because you're not. I don't know where you're driving. I don't know what freeway you get on and where you get off because you're not driving the same roads I'd ride. And freeways are covered in trash. And, and, Ga and Gavin Newsom, they, they must not see it. They must not see it or they're not. They're really not doing anything about it. They must be so in the fucking weeds well, with they got coronavirus. So, and they are, yeah, of course. And there's so much that's on your plate that you know to manage. Like if you're a mayor, governor of city or state of this size and all the issues. But this is a disaster. It's a disaster. And yeah. and whatever they've done with taxes. And I'm look. I'm sitting here willing to pay my taxes. I know I'm getting taxed out the nose. I'm fine with it. I signed up for that. I like living here. My daughters like living here. We're cool with it. But there's also programs like whatever happened to fucking comic relief. Comic relief. Guess what? None of them live here anymore. Yeah, like no one gives a fuck about LA because that you you drove Joe out and and fucking Tom out. Like everyone's leaving, and you're like, God damn it, man! It makes sense why the city's going to shit. And it's like I I, I know I'm this stupid speech isn't going to change anything, but it's like hit me up, I'll fucking do a show. Can't raise a million dollars, but maybe we can help out like a block of people. Sure. Yeah. Uh, like I don't I don't care about politics. I care about people. And yeah. like and like when you see people not getting to live the happiest life they get to live and and not it's just heartbreaking to me it's true whatever i didn't mean to get on a soapbox i know you got well, a lot you guys support homeless people and you're like they should be homeless but. let's just remind people that a lot of paralyzed guys can feel their dicks mm. and um that was this episode i think so wasn't it i can't remember i don't remember either this I hope we're still finding those two girls from Canada. Um, I'll try to post more pictures. That was I know that God was a week ago, it. but you know we'll see if we can get them. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, this is Two Bears One Cave, the Facetime and podcast. I can't believe people don't fucking Facetime people. I know it's pretty aggressive. I'm gonna uh, only Facetime people for now on. That's when a good when move. people text me, I'm gonna Facetime them back. right back. At, there's nothing that makes there's nothing that makes somebody happier when they're just like. Can you make it? And you're like, I'm gonna FaceTime you real quick. <laughs> I'm gonna have. I'm gonna see if I have a text on my thing. Adam yeah. Richmond just. What do you say? I'm gonna just FaceTime him again. Fuck him. He's Adam Richmond, man. He's a fucking television star. He's game. He is camera ready. Every time you call him, he's camera ready. Okay. So far, sounds good. Adam Richmond. How are you, man? I didn't expect to be called so soon. What's up? <laughs> hey, uh, hey, first question. For, we've been talking about uh, foods that build America. But first question, is a FaceTime, because Tom says it is, is a FaceTime an aggressive move to somebody? I think if you are if you don't know it's coming, it can be. And that's just, 
a parent to a child or a child to a parent. Then I think you get carte blanche. All right, I'm turning you to the camera so people can see your beautiful face. Hey, okay, real, mask off. real quick, real quick. I was trying to explain uh, Pizza Hut and and like the dough and like and like pizza and real quick. I want to see if I got it right. Give me the quick explanation about Pizza Hut, if you could. So Pizza Hut was uh, the Carney brothers, and they took over an old restaurant. And they could only fit eight letters on the sign. They knew they wanted to sell pizza, but they, pizza takes up five. So that's how they got hut because it was the only three letters. Was either Pizza Pit that's or Pizza Hut. Yeah, he's good. And they used French bread style dough because that's what their customers knew instead of Italian crust. So that's why it had that kind of crumbly, more French bread like consistency. And then they were failing in the East because people knew what real new york pizza tasted like so what they did was they created a thicker crust to show like we're not trying to be you we're trying to do our own thing which became their pan pizza and they streamlined production by not using like raw ingredients that get cooked on the pie like we used to get in new york they would cook everything at a different facility and just kind of finish it there um Anything else? I don't know. I, it's like a I told I no, I, I told Tom. I said you are the consummate professional. That you are always camera ready. And I I also said you know what was amazing about Adam. I don't know if he can do it right now. He can also do any of his old man versus Reed intros just on the drop of a hat. Yeah, he can bang. Just give us just just Tom. Give us just name a city, and Adam will give you a city. Name a city. Like like a, like a city man versus food city. Like Columbus, Adam. Okay, Columbus. Okay, Columbus. Um, okay. I'm outside the Ohio Deli, a legendary restaurant here in Columbus that's been serving Buckeyes generation after generation. Now, while I've had a chance to sample the Therminator and sample amazing sausages at Schmidt's Sausage House, I am going to take on the Dagwood Challenge. This massive sandwich has been attempted thousands of times, but only a handful of people have managed to finish it. If I do, I get a T-shirt, a picture on the Wall of Fame, and my spot in Columbus, Ohio food history. Today is a battle of man versus dag, and dag, it ain't your day. What the fuck, man? Is that man? not fucking amazing? Is that not fucking amazing? Is that not fucking amazing? Is that not fucking amazing? God damn it, you're a fucking legend, Adam. You're a goddamn legend. Oh, That was fantastic, Adam. The girls, the girls are loving the treats you sent them. Thank you very much. I hey, love... How's I'm, Tom doing after his surgery? Oh, how's Tom doing? Doing well, man. Yay! I'm Everything you, works. Buddy. I miss you. Miss you, man. Yeah, you're the best, brother. I love you. I love Anytime. the new show. I'm Anytime obsessed. You, Anytime. <laughs> I'll talk to you later. Stay safe. All right. Be good, guys. Bye. See you, man. We did a podcast with him at your place years ago. Do you remember that? This is when Joey talked about spending the night in jail with black people. Yes. And we could not stop laughing. And Adam was like, you know, the only thing I don't like to get, like, asked he's like people asking about like bowel movements and stuff from doing the show and i was like that's what i want to know yeah do you take big shits <laughs> and he was like all right <laughs> first of all first of all is that was unbelievable so that was like savant stuff man so we got drunk one night in like new mexico or something or arizona and i did it all night to him you like say that I made him do like twenty episodes. He just remembers them all. He's just his brain is different. Like than retains ours. them. He's, his he I think he's got a photographic memory, but the way his brain works, he's first. There's of all, this thing that I I can do on like when I start a tour. Like if we, if we I'll launch a tour if if COVID is you know put to rest. Let's say later in the year, and it'll be let's say it'll start in September and go through 2022. If you give me like a couple weeks to get like get all the information down you can go like uh april 11th and i'll be like i'll be in uh madison and then you can be like july 16th and i'll be like july 16th minneapolis like i'll retain every city by date oh, for about wow. a year like i can do it for like a year a little over a year no i can't well I, after the tour this summer i, I everything bl i didn't even know what city we were in when yeah. we were there and everything was the identical same stage and identical. But that is like, that is, he's is just that, like, is that not insane? Yeah. He was like remembering a set. I dude, I did it all night long. We sat and drank and I would just call a city and, and, and it was like, I, that's why I say there are guys who know yeah. a little bit about a little bit and guys who not know a lot about a lot. He knows so much about so much. Like even I, and it's, it's, 
I'm telling you, when I said, tell me about Pizza Hut, and he just starts yeah. rattling off the information, I was like, oh, I do remember that kind of. He really retains it. Um, that's a fucking, I want that clip of Adam. Can you clip that out? I want to put great. that, I, that clip of Adam Richman doing the read for Columbus is fucking amazing. Uh, we got to wrap we up. We should wrap up. Yep. Um, that was a lot of fun. Thank you guys for watching and listening. It was a great time. Love you. Love you too. Bert and Tom, Tom and Bert. One goes topless while the other wears a shirt. Tom tells stories and Bert's the machine. There's not a chance in hell that they'll keep it clean. Here's what we call Two Bears on Cave. No scripts, a bit of booze, amateur partology. Dirty jokes, raunchy humor, no apologies. Here's what we call Two Bears on Cave. Thank you.